Hello there, Hallmark here. I'm going to give you a tour today of my storage shed wood shop for 2024. Let us have a moment of silence for all the scrap wood and pine that was in this uh, shed. Now, I know many of you guys, like myself, don't have access to a humongous shop with a bunch of expensive tools, and that's okay. Uh, I'm doing this video to show you guys what I've got going, and also as a way to document what's happening in my life in January, beginning of February, and uh, probably do another one of these towards the end of the year to see how much progress I've made. Uh, this is in a 12 by 20 storage shed. Uh, this was actually an old garden shed that an elderly lady in the community had. Uh, she passed away, sadly, and her son uh, reached out to us uh, to see if we would uh, want it. And of course, I bought it for 800 bucks, delivered. It's crazy, but it was dirty, dusty. It's old, it doesn't have house wrap on it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's not ideal. But it's what I've been blessed with, and I've got to use what I've got and make good things. So here is the shop tour of an $800 12 by 20 workshop. So here she is in all of her glory. You can see how dated it is. Uh, the windows and door need replaced. It's got some junk around it now that I'm working on. But basically, it's just a little bitty old rectangle. All right, so here we go through the human door and into the workshop. I've still got some insulating to do. You can see some of the walls, and of course the ceiling doesn't have insulation on it yet. And the walls aren't covered. Uh, you see I've started here. We gotta paint this and make that look nice, add some trim. Then I've got some white board along the back wall there that I'm working on. And I've covered the walls here with, with plywood uh, up until this point here. So it's still in progress. It's still uh, you know a turd that I'm polishing, but hey, you know it's a fun spot. And uh, let me show you around now and show you the full tour. Coming in from the human door here, we have the uh, little carving desk. I got this desk and the chair for $1 at an auction. It's an old metal desk and a beat up old chair, but I got them for $1. Anyway, there's my trash can. I got a little heater there to keep me warm uh, in the winter time. And then this wall here has been here for a while. I just finished the bottom the other day and I uh, got it ready to paint. I've got a little a uh, shelf here. This is where I keep my music. This is my jams right here, my Bluetooth uh, speaker. I've got some PPE uh, hanging around, some earplugs and earmuffs and things. I keep my little drill there. That's one of the few power tools I do actually enjoy using is a, a little old drill, nothing fancy. And then we've got gnomes all over the place. I like gnomes and I like keeping them handy. So there's a little shelf I built for when you come in. Uh, the carving desk, I uh, don't really do much carving yet, but I love it. Uh, a buddy of mine actually made me this sign here for my new logo. Uh, pretty cool, so thank you, Bo McCormick. Uh, Carb Bones Woodworking. Uh, Hartzell, I think. Yeah, it's kind of got the basics. I got some bass wood and some little kits and stuff, and I'd like to start carving. Uh, you can see I carved a little mushroom there, and I've got a few little guys there I've been working on. Just a penguin and a little man. It's just fun. Something to kind of piddle with. So also this desk is good for keeping uh, all of my woodworking plans in, all of my little oddities and oddball things. And uh, I'm excited to expand this little desk, clean it up, and make it into something better. Uh, coming on around, this is the, the big door where we load it at. It's where I keep my little apron hung at. Uh, like I said, it's not airtight. It's kind of, kind of goofy, but hey, it works. And uh, during the spring and summer, I can actually open that door and the human door, and it gets this really nice light in here, lets the wind in, it's just really peaceful in here, and doesn't feel too bad. Uh, coming on down here, we've got wood storage. I used to have it on the wall, and it took up about eight feet of wall space, uh, but I just adopted this, uh, I guess this uh, vertical storage kind of thing, and it's been working out really good. I'd like to add some little posts right here to kind of hold the each section of wood in. Uh, but I don't keep a lot of wood on hand anyway. Uh, my pile's gotten low, uh, but hey, it is what it is. I got to go next week and get another load from the, the local lumber yard. Uh, and actually, most of the wood I just bring in and then instantly use. Like all of this is actually cut, and I'm going to work on a uh, saw bench uh, next week. So that'll be cool there with some southern yellow pine. Got some walnut, cedar, and cherry scraps, and some old uh, kind of oak. And then I don't use sheet goods, but I had this left over from my. Uh, 
saw sharpening bench build. So I've got some scraps there. I just don't use sheet goods. Uh, I don't use power tools very much. So that is what it is. But that took my uh, wood storage from eight feet down to four feet. And of course, I still got to finish some work, but you know. The newest addition to the shop is this saw sharpening bench. This is a prototype. I'd like to redo it with proper joinery and, uh, of course, better wood and all that. But this was just kind of a mock up. I had this table originally that I built back before I even started woodworking, just to be able to have out here in the shop and, and, and do little oddball projects on. Uh, so I just basically took it, uh, resized it, reused all the wood, and built this little mock up here. And I did an MDF top on this thing. and. Although I've still got some kinks to work through on the MDF top and actually making it good, I do like it so far. It's pretty neat and it's cheap. Uh, but this saw sharpening bench, uh, my goal is when I build my saw bench is to have it housed under here where this junk is and actually have it to where I can put it in there and then pull it out and saw and then push it back. I've also got a little cheap vise here, um, the cheapest vise they had on Amazon. Uh, I got that for putting a uh, uh, saw vise in there getting up here so I can sharpen my saws. Uh, I've got my, um, of course, plane and chisel sharpening set up here, which I'm soon to redo. Uh, and it's got a little place here. Uh, this is this little box I got from Harbor Freight. It holds some antique tools, as well as marking and measuring tools in these little drawers, pretty nifty. And then all my marking and measuring tools are in this drawer so that I can just pull it out, walk to the bench, and use them, and then put them right back. Uh, pretty neat. I'm excited to get more into this and maybe put some foam in there, some Kaizen foam. I think it would be pretty cool. Hey, there I am. Look at there. Hey, it's me. Anyway, uh, also I've got some slots cut in the MDF top here for my um, uh, cross cut and my rip saws that I have now. Uh, of course, I've got some kinks to work out there because I didn't anticipate this leg being there. And, you know, eh, it's all a start. It's, it's a good start. And then I have my other saws up there, my Japanese saws and Old Faithful. This is my first saw ever. It costs like $19 or something crazy. Uh, so I put him up there just for kicks and giggles. I still use it occasionally, but now I've got these other saws that I use and more gnomes. Moving on down from the saw sharpening bench, I have my main area here with my planes, uh, my chisels, my brush, spoke shave, all that good stuff. All my little tools there, which you can see I need to clean them up and work on them. They're starting to rust. I got to do more uh, to help my tools out. Anyway, and then my little bench, this little Nicholson style bench, a little cheap and easy bench that I threw together. I added some southern yellow pine, got my old mallet and some of the little nifty things here that I'm uh, working on. And my little vise here at the end uh, for planing. And then I'd like to get a vise for the front or maybe some hold fast so I can uh, edge joint here on the, the front of the bench. But it, it's all a work in progress, you know. Along this wall here, I have to repair this uh, uh, saddle stand for Texas Roadhouse. I built that for them. They loved it. People went on and on about it. Uh, but a 300-something pound man sat on it and crushed it totally. So I've got to rethink it. Uh, the base, you know, these things, these plans are just designed for display and like a tack barn. So I've got to do some more reinforcement, use some better joinery in the bottom, and make it to where it doesn't bust again. So that was kind of heartbreaking, but you live and you learn. We've got clamp storage up here. Of course, Marilyn Monroe calendar, gotta have that. I just recently got this new shop vac, which is twice as big as the one that I had. And I've got it hooked up to a little uh, separator there that I use when I sparingly do use power tools. I don't use hardly any, but anywho. Uh, this corner is gonna, be be is gonna become my finishing area for things like uh, glue ups, and then also for painting and staining and rubbing the oil in. Uh, this table here I've made for a client. They've got to come uh, pick up soon. Uh, I've got to do some touch-up paint and stuff for the top, but it'll be removed. And I've got some free cabinets coming. Uh, some people down the road had some free cabinets they're going to give me. So I'm hoping to make like an L-shaped cabinet corner here, which I think would be pretty cool. Uh, finish that wall up and make this like a corner for gluing and finishing. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Anyway, that's about it. That's really the full shop. It's not big at all. There's a lot to be done, a lot of changes to be made, but I wanted to definitely document this for myself so that I could kind of see where I started and where I'm going. I've became so inspired over the last two or three years of doing this by shop tour videos and seeing other people's shops, so I hope you get something from this. Um, it's not much right now, but hey, maybe if you're out there and you're 
just starting, like I was a few years ago, you can watch this and kind of get some ideas, maybe think about some things and be inspired and, and know that you don't have to have some huge shop to start woodworking. Uh, it's very fun. Uh, let me tell you about some goals that I have for the shop and what I'm looking to get this year. Also, I'm looking forward in the next few weeks to building the saw bench and having a better way to saw. I'm also going to be redoing the shooting boards, the um, all the little um, kind of shop-made tools. I'm going to be redoing all of those more professionally and better to help get myself prepared to do full-on hand tool work here in the shop. Uh, a lot of things have to be done. There's going to be a lot of content. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button uh, for more like this. All right, guys, let me show you two things that I did uh, this month that has completely changed the way this thing looked. As I'm explaining it and showing you some of the video, I will try to find some old footage of what it was like before so you can see the differences that I've made in only the first month of the year. The ceiling that was in here came straight across. And what I did was I cut out those um, 12 foot members. I cut them down to six feet and raised them, reattached them with screws. I'm a tall guy and I like having some headroom, kind of makes it feel bigger in here. And it's kind of hard to tell right now because this isn't insulated or covered. I mean, it just looks like two by fours up there. Uh, but I will say it does make the space feel twice as big. It's only maybe a foot or two. I mean, it's not much of a difference, but my goodness. It just opens up the ceiling and makes it just feel humongous and tall in here. Uh, now, hopefully the way I butchered the ceiling, hopefully it won't fall on me. If I don't have any more videos come out this year, you'll know that I'm dead. Another element was the floor. Uh, it was an, it's an OSB floor, and before I got it, it was a garden shed. So it was full of you know motor oil and water and... Uh, you know, garden dirt and just I mean, everything, and it was really beat up. There's a lot of deterioration around the edges, and this right here is really, really bad. But it's okay. So I took some porch paint uh, and I painted it this kind of slate gray kind of color, and it makes it feel kind of more uh, professional. I don't know. I know it's not probably a big deal for y'all, but man, for me, it just changed the whole look of the shop and made it look and feel a little bit more professional. So I feel like I'm getting there. This right here is Chester. Hey, Chester. Well, that's all I got. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like the video. And uh, thank you for your support. Any comments that you have, please put them down below. If you spotted something that I did just terribly wrong that you think I may need to consider redoing, or if you have any ideas for something I could add or a way that I could move this around, that'd be great. I'm always open to ideas and uh, good suggestions down in the comments, so make sure you do that. Well, hey, it's January slash February, so we'll look at this video, and then we'll see at the end of the year and see what I've done, see the improvements I've made, and I thank you guys for coming along for the ride.